I'm Alma. I'm 20 years old, and I recently finished my first year of medical studies at the University of Luxembourg, which offered me the chance to follow a trilingual program in French, German, and English all at once. I've studied in Luxembourg for a year, and I'm now continuing my studies in France. Prior to that, I went to a French-German high school in Germany. Now, you're probably wondering whether I'm French, German, or Luxembourgish, or two of those at once, or maybe none of them. What if I told you I actually come from Syria? <laughs> You've probably heard about this whole Syrian refugee crisis over and over again. But have you ever had the chance to sit down with a Syrian and ask them about their hopes, dreams, and desires? Have they ever shared their fears with you, their worst nightmares? Why do they seem to be numbers to the world? Never individuals, always a mass of people. Eight years, seem to have surpassed the delay of what's hot in mainstream media. I'm not here to share the atrocities of the events in my home country with you. I'll spare you the details. What I'm here to tell you is that in that mass of killings and missing people were persons like you and me with amazing ambitions and life goals they never got the chance to achieve. Statistically speaking, I am myself very fortunate to even be here today. So let me tell you my story. I was born in Damascus to two Syrian parents. One year after my birth, we flew to Paris, where my parents, both medical doctors, continued their studies and did a residency in Parisian hospitals. That's where my older brother and I went to kindergarten, and where my two younger brothers were born. Every summer, we went back to Syria, where family was. A big house, grandparents, and lots of cousins. That was Syria to me. Five years later, my parents had finished their diploma. They decided we should go back home. That's where they made a very smart decision to send us, my brothers and I, not to a French school, but to a regular Arabic-speaking school, where English was emphasized upon. We learned Arabic grammar, literature, and poetry. And now, 10 years later, I realize how fortunate I was to have been able to learn that at a young age. Two years later, we found ourselves in Paris again. That was working while we went to school. We only stayed there for a year and then went back to Syria to finally establish a house to live in. We spent two years working on it, repainting, choosing furniture and lights, browsing magazines, and looking for the latest trends. My mom, who had spent years moving between an old small apartment in Paris and a deserted flat in the suburb of Damascus, eventually got herself that house she had been dreaming of for so long. And I was happy to finally have my own room, decorated the way I wanted it to be. Yet that joy didn't last for long. Two years after we settled, the Arab Spring arrived to Syria. And nobody had expected it to escalate that drastically so quickly. We spent a year in the suburb where the civil war had already began. My brothers and I weren't able to go to school for a whole month. Checkpoints weren't letting us pass anymore. Some actual battles were taking place right in front of the school building. It was becoming too dangerous to stay there, so we had to move. We decided to, do, to move to Damascus, the capital, where it was more or less safer as no battles took place inside the city. Well, at least that's what we thought. We were wrong. Bombs fell all over Damascus coming from the surroundings. But I was lucky enough to have amazing parents who put my safety and education before anything else. Two doctors who decided to leave everything behind. 
their private offices, the hospitals they used to work at, and the universities my dad used to teach at, and start a new life elsewhere for the sake of their children. So my dad applied for a visa to France, but he got denied. Lucky enough, we managed to get a visa to Germany, as my uncle has been living in Hanover for the past 40 years. And that's where it all started. We moved all the way from Hanover to Saarbrücken, having heard of the French influence in the region. My dad, again, applied for a visa to France, but couldn't get any. My brothers and I were sent to a French-German high school and had to repeat our last school year each. It was hard for all of us, living in a new country, learning the language, and on top of that, mom and dad having to study all over again in order to get an equivalence of their studies back in Syria, although they had both studied and worked in France. Now, it was a series of events that made them ponder the decision of leaving little by little. I, for example, vividly remember the day my brother came home bleeding because he was aggressed by a gang of young teenagers, thinking that by owning arms, they could own the whole country. Or the day I came home crying, telling Dad that bomb that fell in our school the other day was less than two feet away from killing some of my closest friends. The actual trigger, though, was on the day Mom drove to the grocery store nearby, only to come back and see her car completely demolished by a stray bomb. Now, this is nothing compared to those scenes you see in other parts of Syria, where people lose not only their cars, but literally everything they own. So even when describing scenes like these, I'm well aware of the privilege we had. So yes, somehow, we were the lucky ones. We are the lucky ones. But that's also when we realized there was no choice but to leave. Now, arriving to Germany, I went to school, had summer jobs, did internships. But unfortunately, I often found myself in uncomfortable situations due to prejudice. These are actual reactions I got from the people right after I stated I was Syrian. Oh, you're Syrian, but how come so? You're white. Or, why don't you wear the hijab? A while ago, I was working in a cafe as a summer job, as an Arabic song came on. The customer I was serving then said to me, my girlfriend's Arab, but even I, as a Catholic, can enjoy this type of music. He probably didn't even realize it, but it sounded very offensive to me, especially that he mixed up religion and race. See, it doesn't hurt me as much as it angers me, how it's okay for people to assume things about you solely based on the one information you gave them about yourself. Racism, prejudice, and xenophobia come in all shapes and forms. It's not always verbal or physical abuse. Sometimes it's limited to simple questions we have in the back of our heads that we'd never think would hurt the other person if ever asked to them. Yet they do. I'm not putting the blame on the persons asking them. I'm blaming the media, which insists on portraying us a certain way, so it becomes difficult for people to see diversity within our community. I never knew what homesickness felt like until that point. I was a plant moving from land to land with the same soil in a pot. Yet that soil couldn't hold me for too long. I had to be replanted. Getting myself to live again, that was the hardest part. Now, I felt like my relationship with the places I've lived in was a constant roller coaster shifting from ups to downs in a glance. I left Paris. That's where I first went to school, 
That's where I learned to read and write for the first time. And I was looking forward to go back there. But France didn't seem to want me back. That was my first heartbreak, and it somehow left a scar on me. Syria was, on the other hand, my birthplace, and Damascus, my parents' hometown. It taught me generosity, hospitality, the art of sharing, and the sense of community. Friends and neighbors there all felt like distant family members. <coughs> Yet that feeling couldn't live with me forever, and it tore my heart having to leave. Arriving to Germany, I had a hard time at first, but I was eventually able to fall in love with life again. I see mom smiling here, and I can watch my brothers growing up so beautifully in front of my eyes. Now, those last few years of wandering around, feeling foreign everywhere I went, left me wondering about the deeper meaning of the word home. So I wrote this a while ago. What is home? Because I honestly tried my best to make a home out of this house I live in, but trying doesn't ever seem enough. All of these friends I hang out with, these alleys I now know by heart, the baker down the street and the friendly morning coming from the bus driver on a daily basis as I'm heading to school, they all seem fake to me, unreal and abstruse. Here I am, sitting on my bed at 3 a.m., forcing myself to listen to melancholic music, redefining nostalgia in my head, and giving tragedy a new meaning. Contemplating the walls around me and asking myself existential questions: What is depression? Flashbacks hurt like hell, and I hate crying. But segments of memories that once made me genuinely happy seem to want to push me away so badly from my new reality. This reality to which I'm trying hard to stick. Every single thought that comes to my mind, holding a taste from the past, is being instantly driven away by a forsaken will of mine to live in a parallel world where emotions don't exist, where numbness is the norm, and feelings can't be expressed. Relief is what I henceforth seek. Now, as I said. Arriving to Germany, I, I, could, I was able to fall in love with life again. Unfortunately, I can't speak for everyone. Some ten-year-olds are still afraid of fireworks. Others won't dare get into the water anymore, afraid of swimming. Some kids are being abused at schools. And it might sound corny, but the fact that these traumas can't be, self, can't be left unsolved. Is one of the reasons I decided to study medicine. Now, like me, many other Syrians had no choice but to leave everything behind, come here, and start from scratch. Here's an example: Mohammed and Ahmed Bazarto are two brothers with whom I went to school back in Syria. After having tried in vain to get their way to Europe legally. They decided to take the risk and come here by boat. So they left Syria, crossed more than five countries, and overcame a deadly 14-day trip to be on board of one of three boats that left the Libyan shore on the same day, from which only one arrived to Italy safely. Ahmad, who was elected school representative in his high school, is now starting dentistry school. In, Han in Hamburg, he also obtained a scholarship in a Universal Dance Company. Mohammed is a fourth-year medical student. He was a sprinter in the Vakuzin soccer team, and is a rising Instagram model. Now imagine if they had been on the wrong boat. Imagine if they hadn't been given the chance to start again. Even thinking about it now gives me the chills. <clears throat> now I'm not saying the struggle's over and that I won't face any identity issues anymore, but I'm getting there. I'm Alma and I'm a future doctor. I'm perfectly fluent in four languages. 
I feel Syrian, French, and German all at once. Being born Syrian was both a curse and a blessing to me. <clears throat> and although I struggled to get to the place I am today, I wouldn't change the life I've had for anything in the world. So tell me, what goes up to your mind when you hear the word Syrian? Thank you.